Here we go again. Hello and welcome to Calisthenics Pedia. Hi. This video is all about hypertrophy in calisthenics. We show you how it works and what it does to your muscles. Furthermore, we cover some training techniques and show you how you can achieve the best end results. But before we start, please type in your name. Okay, why not? Perfect, thank you. And now let's get started. At first we will talk about the basics, so that we all have the same starting point. A little fun fact, humans have about 650 different muscles. They allow us to walk, eat, train, do whatever we want. Without the muscle there is no movement, so the muscles are essential for our daily life. Muscles consist of small little fiber, the muscle fiber. And the muscle fibers consist of many little myofibrils. And myofibrils are just long protein chains. From a scientific point of view, there are two ways to build muscles. At first the hyperplegia and the other one is the hypertrophy. What is hy uh, hyperplasia? So in hyperplegia the muscle cells get multiplied. So that means your body creates a completely new muscle fiber. However, this has not been proven in a human body yet. Although it is disputed if we can transfer this to a large mammal just like a human. And what is hypertrophy? So the definition of hypertrophy is the volume increase of a cell. Didn't you mention that before? So it's a little bit different compared to hyperplegia. Because in hyperplegia the cells get multiplied and in hypertrophy the cells increase in volume. So the word hypertrophy is just the volume increase of a cell. But in the fitness scene hypertrophy refers to the volume increase of muscle fibers. So the specific cells you find in muscles. Hmm, but why and how do my cells grow? In hyperplegia the muscle crossover section becomes greater due to the multiplication of the muscle fibers. Where in hypertrophy, the number of the muscle fibers stays the same. They just increase in volume. And so overall the muscle gets bigger. And what happens when muscle growth occurs in the body? Muscle growth occurs when the stimulus from the training you have done is bigger than the last. So you need to go above your usual performance. This training stimulus through the workout results in micro cracks in the muscle fibers. The result of that is muscle soreness. And why do muscle actually get bigger? In the recovery phase, about 24 or 48 um, hours later, when you feel the muscle soreness, the body repairs the damaged muscle fiber. And the body also thickens them to adjust them to the new stimulus you set. That they are prepared when you train the next time and don't get damaged. Uh, what? Oh, you haven't subscribed yet? That's why you didn't understand what I said. Just press pause, subscribe, scroll back and listen again. Okay, all right. We see us in a minute. To illustrate, Here's a small example. Let's compare the muscle with a plant. What does a plant need to grow? Sun, water and earth. If these three factors are correct, the plant will grow. In case of the muscle, these principles are roughly the same. The sun stands for breaks, the earth for nutrition and the water for training. If these three factors are correct, the muscle will grow. Ah, okay, now I got you. Then I will start tomorrow and will train every day till I get to my goal. Wait a minute. As well as you can water a plant too often, you can train your muscles too often. In the process, the plant is stiffing. 
and the muscle is overtrained. The same applies when you pour too little water to the plant and train too less. So the perfect balance between the three factors are very important. Mm, okay, that sounds logical, but how do I know how much I should train to grow my muscles? When we look up the scientific point of view, the reps you should do to stay in the hypertrophy section are around 8 and 12. The intensity should be around 70 or 80 percent of you. 1 RM. The 1 RM is the repetition maximum. To visualize that for you, here's a little example. If you can squat with 100 kg one time, that's your one repetition maximum. So you need to break down the exercise that you get around the 70 and 80 percent. That means you drop your weight before you have done your squat with 100 kg. That's your 100 percent. But you need the 70 or 80 percent so that means you squat with just 70 kilogram or 80 oh. kilogram if you don't know how to make a exercise a calisthenics exercise easier just write us a dm on instagram so that we can contact each other and we can help you for the perfect stimuli you should train two or three times a week when you're a beginner when you're an advanced athlete you can train more than that so about four or five times. It depends how you structure your training. At these two or three sessions per week, your rep range, the reps you do per exercise should be between eight or 12 reps. When you do this three times, so three sets, and that's the perfect range. Let's talk about the rest time you do between the exercises and between the sets. Between the sets, the rest time is around one minute. And after the three sets, you rest for two minutes. And then you go on with the next exercise. Awesome, now I'm ready to grow some muscle. Let's go. No, wait a minute. Mm. Dude, the video isn't over yet. And why? You also need to know a little bit about nutrition. Nutrition? Really? Yep, nutrition. <sighs> it's one of the three factors I told you earlier. Okay. In muscle building, the intake of protein plays an important role. Contrary to a widespread rumor that animal protein performs better than the protein you get from vegetables, scientists have been unable to find any evidence. So it's not important if you get your proteins from animals or from vegetables. It's just protein and the protein okay. supports your muscle building. It is recommended to consume one to 1.5 gram protein per kilogram daily. That means when you weigh 70 kilogram, you roughly need to consume between 70 gram and 190 gram protein per day. Here you can decide whether you would eat the whole 190 grams at once or you split it up over the whole day. Schoenfelder et al. in 2000 13 has not been able to establish in a meta study a correlation huh? so a connection between the time you take the protein and the success of your training therefore the only thing you need to know is your recommended protein intake per day okay that's all we are through henry are you there hey oh oh when the time comes and you want to know more about nutrition, check out our nutrition guide. There you will find the answers you will need. The video pops up right now in the right corner. Let's talk about how you can vary your training. So you don't get bored just like you get <coughs> while I was talking about nutrition. There are also a few factors you can change. The volume, the intensity and your rest time between the exercises the sets whatever and now we show you how you can structure your training here is a little example how you can do it you can use it if you want to or you can visit our website there you will find other plans you might be interested in just check them out and try them out if you want to give us some feedback that would really help us to improve our skills 
If you have any questions about the topic hypertrophy in calisthenics, just leave us a comment under this video or write us a DM on Instagram at dascalisthenics so that we can hopefully answer your questions. Stay tuned for the next video and have a nice summer day. Peace.